Okay, so the directions say read the Irish story below, so we'll do that. Um, look up the word sprightly. Sewing utilizes the mathematics of measure and measurement and geometry of which the tailor would have had to use to sew together the trues. We'll find out what trues are in a minute. And then share your favorite part of the story in the comments. So here we have a picture of the sprightly tailor. He was an old man. And we'll learn about what this creature is in a minute. So let's take turns reading again. Who would like to start? Me. Go ahead. How about like the first right here? See where my arrow is? You can end right there. All righty. Or actually right That's here, because I forgot to put the text up next to the word by. So right there, if you please. All right. A sprightly tailor was employed by the great MacDonald in his castle at Saddle. Uh oh, the, the legs being the vest and breeches united. For some reason, your sound is going in and out. I'm not sure why. In you can keep in the vest and breeches united in one piece and ornamented with fringes were very comfortable and suitable to be worn in walking or dancing. And MacDonald had said to the tailor that if he would make the truce by night in the church, he would get a handsome reward. For it was thought that the old ruined church was haunted and that fearsome things were to be seen there at night. The tailor was well aware of this, but he was a sprightly man and the laird dared him to make the truce by, by night in the church. The tailor was not to be daunted, but took it in hand and gained the prize. So when the night came away, he went up to the glen, about half a mile distance from the castle, till he came to the old church. Then he chose, then he chose him a nice gravestone for seat. He lighted his candle and put on his thimble and set to work at the trues, plying his needle nimbly and thinking about the hire that the laird would have give him. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so that's an interesting scene. He's been challenged to do what? <laughs> Go to a haunted church. Right, and he sits on a gravestone and sets to work. Um, so, Emily, would you like to read the next three? Right, you can end down here. Okay. <clears throat> For some time, he got on pretty well until he felt the floor all of a trem tremble under his feet. And looking about him, but keeping his fingers at work, he saw the appearance of a great human head rising up through the stone pavements of the church. When the head had risen above the surface, there came from it a great, great voice. And the voice said, do you see this great head of mine? I see, I see that, but also this, replied the sprightly tailor, and he stitched away at the trues. Then the head rose higher up through the pavement until its neck appeared, and when its neck was shown, the thundering voice came again and said, do you see this great neck of mine? I can pick it up here. I see that, but I also this, said the sprightly tailor, and he stitched away at his trues. Then the head and neck rose higher still until the great shoulders and chest were shown above the ground. And again, the mighty voice thundered, do you see this great chest of mine? And again, the sprightly tailor replied, I see that, but I'll sew this and stitched away at his trues. And still it kept rising through the pavement until it shook a great pair of arms in the tailor's face and said, do you see these great arms of mine? I see those, but I'll sew this, answered the tailor, and he stitched hard at his trues, for he knew that he had no time to lose. The sprightly tailor was taking the long stitches when he saw it gradually rising and rising through the floor until it lifted out a great leg and stamping with it upon the pavement said in a roaring voice, do you see this great leg of mine? I, I, I see that, but I'll sew this, cried the tailor. And his fingers flew with the needle, and he took such long stitches that he was just come to the end of the trues when it was taking up its other leg. 
but before it could pull it out of the pavement, the sprightly tailor had finished his task, and blowing out his candle and springing from off his gravestone, he buckled up and ran out of the church with the trues under his arm. Then the fearsome thing gave a loud roar and stamped with both his feet upon the pavement, and out of the church he went after the sprightly tailor. Down the glen they ran, faster than the stream when the flood rides it. But the tailor had got the start and a nimble pair of legs. He did not choose to lose the laird's reward. And though the thing roared to him to stop, yet the sprightly tailor was not the man to be beholden to a monster. So he held his trues tight and let no darkness grow under his feet until he had reached Sedell Castle. He had no sooner got inside the gate and shut it than the apparition came up to it and enraged at losing his prize struck the wall above the gate and left there the mark of his five great fingers. Ye may see them plainly to this day if you'll only peer close enough. But the sprightly tailor gained his reward for MacDonald paid him handsomely for the trues and never discovered that a few of the stitches were somewhat long. <laughs> okay. So what was your favorite part of that story? <laughs> the, when the big thing came out of the ground. Yeah, I like how the, the big monster like slowly raised different Not parts of his body. How <laughs> How exactly did it come out of the pavement? I have to say that that probably hurt. Right here, so there's these large bricks that he pushed up through. Oh. Emily, he looks weird. Yeah, he looks he scaled. Looks, he looks hairy in between the scales. Yeah. Very bizarre. Oh, what do you think this handprint is from? I just figured it out now. <laughs> when he when he struck the wall. Mm -hmm. Out of frustration that he wasn't going to get a meal that night. <laughs> he wasn't going to get to eat the old man. Poor guy. But if the Sprightly Taylor isn't that old, then he probably would have been old and tough anyway. <laughs> Emily, what was your favorite part in the story? I liked how the tailor just kept on sewing it, sewing, even though the monster was rising up out of the ground. I know. That was pretty crazy brave. <laughs> yeah, like he just would not be deterred from his work because he wanted that reward, which is probably a ton of money, I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah, so to stay around. To stay yeah. around with that thing, that had to be a lot of money. I think so. Plus the proof that he was indeed chased by it with the handprint on the castle wall. All right, so there are tons of Celtic stories out there. They're very amusing, um, very fascinating, different storylines, of course. And there's stories that I found online of varying length. Some of them are like a mini booklet. So this was one of the shorter ones. I wanted to keep it short for the sake of time. All right, so those watching the recording, leave your comment of what your favorite part in the story was.